Hey, start a stream. Okay, so uh, today we're gonna continue working on the on the two editor tools that we've made last time, um, and then we're gonna do some research for um, for adding infinite levels to the to the game. So we have some parts of the game that require. So there are some upgrades and uh, actually the gameplay that require. Uh, yeah, you, you, how should I say this? So so we basically specify a couple of levels for an upgrade, and then we somehow have to extrapolate from that uh, from that data and create infinite levels. Basically, that's what uh, that's what we want to do. And uh, I'm not sure how to do that, and I'll have to look into it. And I think uh, it'd be fun to find out how to do that. Uh, but as I said, um, we're gonna work a bit on uh, on the editor tools. Uh, we're gonna do some small changes, um, and then um, yeah, we're gonna come back to this uh, infinite levels thing. Okay, so let's see, what do we have here? Okay, so one thing that I wanna do uh, is related to upgrades. So this is the editor uh, that we made last time for creating and updating uh, or managing upgrades in the game. Um, and one thing that I want to change that is not, um, yeah, completely okay right now. So you you have to, sp yeah. So so you have levels for for each upgrade, and you have to specify, um, yeah, whatever. What's the multiplier? So what does the level actually do, and the cost of it. And you have uh, an input for the for the amount, and then what currency should be used to to unlock this level. And um, yeah, this is okay. But one thing that happens is I'm using a generic component for basically creating this currency, um, and it's just a simple. Um, It's just a simple scriptable object that I that, uh, that I can create uh, in the project, and so I can link different parts of the game. And it works fine, except for the fact that when you have currency, for example, and you want to select a currency, so let's say I don't have a currency. Yeah, so I need to specify a currency. When I click on this, you have one currency. But then you have some other things that use the same um, the same uh, scriptable object um, class. And uh, what I would like to do is to have uh, basically create a new a new type for for currencies and only use it for for this. Um, yeah, basically that's that's uh, that's it. Um, actually, no. I have to. I have two solutions, but I have to 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 look at some things from uh, Odin Inspector. So, so we're using a, a package for, um, yeah, for creating, a, a, let's say, beautiful UI for the for the editor. And they have some uh, some interesting uh, attributes that you can decorate your properties and fields with. And um, yeah, one of them. Let me bring that up real quick. So what I was, uh, what I wanted to to use was this one. So um, uh, this uh, a uh, asset selector, and what this does is, let's say you have, as it's in this example, let's say you have a, a field which is a of type character in this case, and whenever you, uh, so basically what this uh, what this attribute does is add this uh, this button next to the next to the input. And um, you can click on it and it, uh, show you all the um, basically all the characters in the project. So instead of having uh, having to drag it, uh, them or have that uh, 
um, what do you call it? The asset selector window. You just have a list directly in here. So you click uh, click on here, and it's like a, it's like a drop down basically. So you so you get a list of values that you can put. It's similar to this, except that it's not a separate window. And well, it can do and you can do some other stuff because you can have um, you can add it to to an array, for example. And then you have this uh, this interesting list with uh, uh, where is it? Uh, you have this list with uh, checkboxes, and you can select stuff, so you can add multiple items uh, at a time. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's what I want to do. But now that I that I, that I look up at it, I think so. So in the code, I I don't care if if my currencies are made from this class, the link class, or another one. I'm just using it to to uh, as I said to link some places in the code. And yeah, now that I think about it, I think we can hmm. Let's play a bit with this uh, with this um, with this attribute because I might be able to use either. Now that I uh, think about it, I can use either path to to limit the the scope in which the the asset selector can take uh, uh, can take items from, or either uh, we can use uh, a filter to only filter for uh, uh, links. So yeah, links which have I don't know currency in the name or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, that might be interesting. So let's go there. Let's. Um, so what was this? This was an upgrade, so we'll have to go to the upgrade definition. And it's an upgrade level, so here it is. So here's the currency, which is of, of type link. Let's first see what, uh, what this uh, does without specifying anything for it. Then more also interesting how it looks in the other okay so it, it's added uh, those three three dots here and now instead of having this list we actually have we have uh, we have them display, uh, displayed like so which is actually nice so yeah actually we can uh, can limit this to only search um, in this folder called economy. Or hmm, let's see what it does. Let's uh, let's try to add something. So um, Yeah, so I think I think let's try with filter. So let's say I want it to have currency in the name. I wonder if it's gonna affect this asset selector as well, or only this. Uh... Eh, this doesn't work. I mean, it works because yeah, uh, there's currency in here, but uh, this is not what I want. But this, uh, this, uh, yeah, okay. So this, uh, the default uh, asset select window from Unity still uh, doesn't uh, have them filtered. Okay, so I think I think I'm gonna do it uh, like so. I'm gonna change it so we're using a different uh, a different data type. So what I'm gonna do is let's go to there's a folder for economy. Yeah, here. Let's create a currency class, and it's gonna be a scriptable object. And actually, let's go to um, yeah, let's go to the link and just copy this.
Okay. Okay, let's create a new currency. Actually, can I? Okay, so here, here are my currencies. Let's create a new currency. Uh, project top economy currency. Points currency. Uh, I, I, I can't have the same name. That's that's correct. Uh, let's add a link so we need the the link one. Okay, so we have coins currency, and now let's change the type for the or in the in the upgrade instead of link. Uh, let's have it be currency. So for now we're not uh, we're not actually using this, so um, there won't be any problem. So yeah, so now we only have one. And in the list, yeah, again we only have we only have the one because yeah, this is the only one of this type. Um, yeah. So this works, but uh, we don't we no longer need a filter. Um, but what I wonder is if I can. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm probably not gonna use this. Uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, I don't like it that it's like, um, like it shows the whole path. The only difference from the between the this Odin window and the the one from Unity is that if you want to select something here, or you can you can click on this and select it. You have to click outside, or you can uh, double click on the item. Uh, the difference in here is that I can just click once and it, and it just disappears. So it's it's one click versus two clicks. Uh, but what I don't like is there's this uh, how the how the button looks. It is not centered with the with the input. That's something I don't like. Uh, but uh, yeah, given the fact that we've changed this and uh, we actually have a specific data for currency, I don't think I'm gonna keep the asset selector because it doesn't make sense anymore. But uh, uh, it will be useful for for other things for sure. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we have to. Oh, I forgot to do something. I forgot to start a task and um, track the time. So let's track the time and. So let's see. So there are four minutes with three minutes. Actually, how long have I been streaming for? 17 minutes minus. Okay, so it's about. Uh, 12 minutes uh, uh, for this task already. Okay. Um, yeah. So we we'll have to, to 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 change everywhere where we where we've used the link for currency and uh, replace it with uh, with this new data type. And to be honest, I am not sure where I've used the currency. So we're gonna just search for it. Um, there's one place. This should be currency. This should be currency. What's this? Currency info in the economy. Okay, I know where to change that. This should be currency. Uh, nope. This should be currency. Here as well. And here. Okay, now we can check errors and uh, okay. I'm just gonna replace uh, no everywhere where I see currency I'm gonna replace uh, where I see, where I see link is for currency I'm gonna replace it with currency 
uh, another place. Uh, what's this? Add currency reward. Yeah. Yeah, this should be currency. And this might be it. Uh, not really. There's another place. What's this? Weapon definition. Okay. So this is the cost of a weapon. Or more like the currency used for, for um, creating a weapon. And uh, this is the stat, which is okay to be a link. Uh, let's do a refresh here. Um, I'm not seeing any links. So I think we're fine. We I think we've replaced everything. Okay. Now let's go back and remove this. And where's the other currency? This is the other currency. And now let's create um, uh, economy, currency. Okay, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so we have this. Uh, we'll have to go to the weapons. Um, this. Uh, not damage the... Uh, wait. Didn't I replace something here with, uh, with currency? Something for weapons? Oh, in the definition, yeah. So this will be coins. Uh, let's go to the other weapons as well. Um, coins, and it has a level also made coins. And what else? What else? Um, what else is here? Enemy reward. Let's go to the to our the enemy. Uh, so it's in the Fab, I guess. Um, where are the, here are the rewards. So whenever we kill an enemy, we get ten coins. Awesome. Let's save this, and that should be it, I guess. Uh, let's start the music. Uh, let's put something else. Um, what what should we choose? Let's do this, and then do they. They haven't. Let's add palms as well. Let's add this to the queue. And also anthology. Yeah, let's add this as well. I think. Okay, we're gonna have music for uh, for a little while. Okay, let's try this. See if we get any errors. Okay, looks fine. Yeah. Actually, we can't. Why can't we? Um, what? I can't. Uh... Oh, yeah, I know. Because in the economy, which is, I don't know where, but I'm going to find it right away. Um, not in scripts. In here, I have declared that I have 10 coins by default. So now I should be able to create weapons. Uh, that's not a weapon, this is a weapon. There we go. So that's, well, currently in the game, this is considered a weapon. The area in which the weapon uh, can attack uh, an enemy. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, um, let's see. 
yeah i think no actually this is so this is actually it um i think we're done with this uh, it's the task or the timer for the task more and okay let's hope this works so this is gonna be here publish something funky with this coins currency oh but it but it went through so i guess we're fine okay let's see what's next on the table um yeah there's one small thing that i have to do um where's that window i don't have it oh yeah this one As I said, we are using Odin, and uh, Odin uh, by default does two things in a project. Uh, you, it, it gives you the attributes for creating uh, um, or changing the UI in the in the editor, and uh, you can also use it to to serialize uh, data. Um, and it's useful for data types that are not uh, supported by Unity or by Unity's uh, serializer. Uh, but we are not using the serializer from Odin, and I like to disable it, um, so it's not uh, so it's not added to the to the, to the final build because we don't need the data for it. Or we don't we don't we don't need the code for it. I mean, so it's just um, where are the properties tools. Odin uh, preferences. Yeah, there we go. Editor only mode. Yes, please. Okay. Hey. Okay. Um. Let's also try to make a build and make sure that uh, this still works. So let's build and run. Uh, yes, mono. Let's see what's happening. We have an error. Right, we had an error. I mean, it might not be related to Odin, so uh, if it's. Oh! Oh yeah, we did have an error. Um, okay. Why do I have this? Or what am I using that for? I'm using it for something, but... Huh? I just commented this and it's... Still works. What the hell? Okay, I'm confused. Yes, I'm confused. Uh, what? I have a where in here. Not this one, but the Q where? No, I don't. Okay, I'm not sure why this is happening. Um, I don't know why this is needed. But apparently it's needed for something, because it's not grayed out. Um, what does this contain? Probably some extension methods, but... Uh, or, or not. What? What the hell is this? Scripting define symbol. What the hell is this, man? I have no idea why this is needed. I'm gonna just remove them for now and see. I can click on that and see if it's gonna compile without them. Okay, so now this is 
Okay, so this is breaking for some reason. Okay, so I need this 4H, and this 4H comes from that, I, I assume. I know this is weird. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you, extension. Yeah, I was thinking about that. So it was a 4H, not a uh, not a where statement. So if I search here for a 4H, we can to use that. Okay. Okay, now this is weird. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'll have to fix this. So, but this I know what's what's broken. So the entity root is the problem. So that should be an easy fix. Uh, but we're gonna keep the changes. So we're gonna this, and then we're gonna move on to the next uh, next task. So fight for this. Because those errors um, that are actually not from this project uh, per se, it's coming, they're coming from Yes Framework, which uh, for the source code in uh, in another project. So this is no more like a chore. I actually know it's a feature because we're actually changing how things are happening in the game. So let's publish this and uh, let me make task in ES framework for checking this out and fixing this. So Okay, so I made a task and I'm gonna come back to this uh, some other time. Okay, let's get back to, yeah, so so we have some tasks that I want to make, um, it's still related to the editors, oh, I mean, not, not quite related to it, more like what's happening um, in the levels, so let's get to a wave. Um, let me get back a bit here, okay, so. Um, right now, uh, so so this is the definition of a wave. This is how you specify um, yeah, this is how you specify which enemies are gonna be spawned, how many and how fast they're they're gonna be spawned in a, in a wave. And uh, obviously you can have multiple uh, multiple enemies. Um, yeah, just in case, uh, you can't actually have the same enemy twice, but uh, um, yeah, anyway. Um, so you, let's say you have uh, two types of enemies that you want to spawn. Uh, currently, both types of, of enemies are going to start spawning um, at the same time. So they're going to be spawning in parallel. And one thing that I want to do is add uh, two, two features to this, one of which being um, a checkbox. So, so for the second enemy, I would like a checkbox. And when the checkbox is, uh, is checked, uh, what's going to happen is this type of enemy is going to be spawned after the, the, the previous enemy has uh, stopped spawning. So you basically, uh, so you'll be able to chain uh, the spawning. And the second thing that I want to add is a delay. So um, let's say the, the the spawning should start now. So let, let's just get rid of this. So, so let's let's take the first enemy. So so the first enemy should start should start spawning immediately immediately. But then you have a, an option for for setting a delay. So let's say you want to start after two seconds from from uh, from the time the wave uh, started, and we'll be able to do that. So yeah, those are the two two options that we're gonna add. 
Um, yeah, that's uh, that's basically it. I think we're gonna start with the delay because that's uh, uh, that is easier to do, and then we're gonna come back to to do that um, that checkbox because that's gonna require some some interesting things. That, yeah, because we'll have to know. Uh, about yeah, I will have to know about the order and what's uh, what are, what uh, enemy is spawning uh, before before another one. So let me start the 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 timer for the task. And yeah, okay. So close everything. Uh, let's go to let's actually. I said this, so let's go to the waves and to the wave definition. Okay, so we have the enemy type, we have how many enemies we want to spawn, we have uh, how many enemies are spawned per second. Uh, and then, um, what should we add this? Should we add this afterwards? After the spawn rate? Yeah, I think I'm gonna add it here. So, as I said, first we're gonna have a private, um, I'm gonna add the the fields here and then we're gonna hook them up so first it's gonna be a bool uh, and it's gonna be uh, That's a long name, so let's start spawn after Yeah. Something like this. And actually it has to be with an underscore in a lowercase s. This is how this looks like. Actually, I'm not going to see it because I haven't added a serialized field to this. Serialized field and what else? Um, let's add some space. Yeah. And if we're here, let's add this. Um, Spawn delay is going to be a float. Uh, this uh, and it's going to be zero by default. We're going to have a mean uh, value of zero, and then we're going to have a suffix label. It's going to be seconds, and it's going to be inside the input. So let's see it. Click on the wave, and here we have those. So spawn after previous. Um, yeah, we don't have enough space here. Um, I'm not sure if I can make this. Uh, if I can push this further. Uh, I think I've done something to make them uh, have this size. Uh, let me check actually. Um, so one way to check is, I actually can check, um, no, let me search for that, so, yeah, wait to finish. Yeah, so here, uh, the, the labels have a, uh, they don't have a, a fixed, uh, a fixed width, but here, uh, they have, so... 
let's find out how, how I did that because I need some more space in here. So where would I put that? Um, I mean, in the editor for sure. But, uh, where would the editor be? In the levels, editor, levels editor. So it would be here. We'll have to search for a for an editor. Set up sidebar, not sidebar. Um, Set up editor uh, for weights, and here we should have an editor. But nothing here. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. There is nothing here. And I'm pretty sure I have an, an, uh, so not here, but in the USS file. Um, I can't because uh, I can't, I can't have anything here because uh, yeah this this part is I'm going is not uh, it's, it's drawn with I'm going instead of uh, um, UI toolkit. I don't know why that's why that has a fixed size. I am not sure how I've done this. I, I remember doing something like this, but I don't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, we can live with it uh, for now. Uh, what I want to do though is remove this space here because I don't want the, the space between those two values because they are um, somewhat related. Let's clear the console. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so yeah, actually, this is everything. Um, so those are the fields, and now we have to actually use them. So for that, we'll have to go to the um, Wave Manager, I uh, actually not Wave Manager, but um, Enemy Manager and then Enemy Spawner. Yeah, this. Um, yeah. Yeah, so in the enemy spawner, uh, it's where we have to do this. So here we're doing a spawn immediately, which is not correct. Um, we will need a timer. So private uh, load delay timer. Then we have to go to the update function, uh, which is here. So so if uh, timer is uh, more than zero, we're gonna do this, and if Or no, yeah. So if it's it's more than zero. We're gonna just remove the delta time. Otherwise, we're gonna add, update this timer. And this on spawn will have to change to be in here actually. Or yeah. So if delay timer is less or equal. To, uh, to zero, 
we're gonna do this in here delay timer is gonna be equal to give enemy definition dot dot there's nothing here because uh, we haven't exposed the values so we have to do that so let's do this first so this is gonna be public public Yeah, let's keep it like this. Um, let's remove the false from here and then let's paste it like so. And let's put a capital S and let's do the same for delay. Public float spawn delay. Okay, so now we can go here and actually get the spawn delay. Okay. So now this should be set up uh, correctly and now we can theoretically test it so let's try to play the game and uh, yeah so so the game started uh, immediately and now to set up a delay let's say two seconds then after which seemed like two seconds uh, the, the wave started so Okay, so this this seems to work. Uh, we're gonna test with. Uh, I'm gonna make an enemy type, another dummy enemy type to to test this more. But, uh, after we do do the other um, the other uh, f uh, feature. Okay, so the other one is we have to wait for for the previous one to stop and so we'll have to pass this uh, or the, the enemy definition uh, from before. Um, let's get the index. It is the index, right? Yeah, and I'm not sure if if it's uh, giving me the okay. So it doesn't give me the the actual source uh, in here. So that's not a problem. So what I want to do is. Um, something like this but actually oh wait a second actually, I don't care about the definition that's not what I care about what I, what I should care about is the the actual spawner yeah because that actually that's what I want I want the spawner um Yeah, so here I actually want um, previous wave, uh, previous wave, uh, or previous enemy spawner. Yeah, so because of that, we have to change this a bit. So we'll have to do this with a uh, With a for loop instead of uh, instead of this select, 
So let's see, uh, bar spawners. Now let's make a list of a spawner. We'll do that for loop and then active spawners is to be spawners dot do array. Here we're gonna do the for loop i and uh, this is make that a var. Spawners of i spawner equal to spawner. Um, of i, and then we provide the the previous spawner. So if e is equal to zero, then pass in a null. Otherwise. A wave enemy, uh, not wave, uh, spawners of i minus 1. Oh, uh, that be. Now I can get, it, get rid of this. Okay, so now in a spawner, we actually know about the previous spawner. So, how does that help? Um, yeah, this helps by, okay, so here we first have to check if we have a delay. If we don't have a delay and we wave enemy definition dot this and not this, I mean, so we so if you start uh, right away, then we do this initial spawn, and we have to save that. Yeah, we have to save this because we're gonna need it in the update loop. So private this with the underscore in front, like so. And now in the update, uh, in the update method, we're gonna say. Okay, so if it's not playing, or we don't have a wave definition, or um, wave enemy definition dot spawn after previous and previous spawner that has enemy left to spawn. No, if it still has enemy left to spawn, we're gonna we're gonna return. And, um, just to be sure, I don't have to specify uh, brackets here, right? I redundant. Yeah. Okay, so theoretically this should work. This should tie up nicely with the with the delay as well. Uh, all we need to do now to test this, we oh my god, what's happening here? Oh, so he's freaking out. Nothing new. Um, to create another another enemy, or more like I have to create another uh, um, enemy definition. So I'm just gonna duplicate the the existent one. Uh, Everything is gonna stay the same. I'm gonna use the same object pool because I actually need the same the same enemy. And I have to add this uh, no, I only have to add it to the wave. Oh yeah, so I can so so for waves and levels and upgrades and whatever, I can either use the uh, not the level editor. Actually no, yes, level editor. I can either use the level editor, or actually go to the the file on disk and change it. Uh, it's there. It's the it's the same thing. Okay, let's add this new enemy, which is this one. I'm gonna spawn two of them. 
one per second. It's gonna, I'm gonna uh, spawn it after the previous one is done. Let's uh, let's keep the delay there. Sure. Okay. So let's see. Can we be sure that this is happening correctly? Um. That's right. Yay, we have errors. Why do we have errors? Errors of I. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we can do this. Uh, this is not Java. This is C sharp. So we have to add it, actually. So like this. Okay, so we should have two spawners. Um, yep, we have two spawners. So the first one, and then are the second enemies. Um, why can't they move? Hello. Um, what the hell is going on? Why can't I move? Is something grabbing my focus? No. Um. Now it's working. What the hell? Anyway, uh, it actually. So we have the two enemies, and then uh, the other two are falling right behind. So that means that they have respawned after the previous one has finished. So that is cool. And we can also test the the delay, the delay for the second one. So let's put a two seconds delay between them. Let's actually start this so it goes faster. Let's start that right away. So let's play. So there are those two. And then we have the other two uh, behind. And they're uh, a bit further behind than, than they were uh, last time. I can't move again. Oh, no, I can't move because... Oh, I'm stupid. Yeah, so I paused the game and of course I can't move while the game is paused. Yeah, the, that's why it was working. Nice. Let's keep the cooldown. So one, two. Boom. And after two seconds, the other the other spawner started. Whoa. Yep, I think this task is also done. And actually, no, uh, there's one thing that I want to do. So if we look at the wave definition, I can check this checkbox in here, which is not correct because it doesn't make sense to have a, a, a checkbox for, for the first one in the list. So I'm going to... Um, hmm. I'm gonna disable it. Yeah. I was wondering how I should do it. I might not be. I mean, no, for sure I'm able to do it, but I have to do some weird things to, to make it work. Mm. 
and I don't have anything related to this. Yeah, so I kind of can't uh, disable it because I have to know if it's the first one in the list. And I don't know that here. Um, but I can find out actually. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it like that. So I'll have to add a private bool is first in list. Yeah, it's gonna be false by default. This is gonna be um serialized. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's gonna be public. Yeah. It's actually, can I do it like this? Yeah, I think I can. Or but should I serialize it? I mean, I can't serialize it. It's like a bull. It's not gonna take like um, a lot of space. Yeah, I'm gonna serialize it, but I'm gonna uh, just hide it. Um, Yeah. I'm gonna hide it in the inspector. What I'm gonna do is um let's see. Here on the list I'm gonna say on value changed. Let's pick a region. Um, set up enemies. Or I um, enemies length enemies of I uh, enemies of I dot um, is first in list equals to I equals to zero. Let's make this a var. And actually, let's remove now so we can see it. And let's remove system from here because it's ugly. So we should be able to see that checkbox in here, and we are not seeing it. Oh, uh, I didn't compile actually. Okay, so it's working. The first one in the list uh, has this checked. And with this information, what I can do is go here and say table if name of. So I want to disable this field if it's in the list. And now that I think about it, I want to make it. Yeah, I think I need to take it a step further. I can still modify it, you know, I can put a second in the list, I can change it and then put it back. And now I change the value. So I actually sh shouldn't care about the value. So, okay, so um, let's see. So I'm going to make this part. Is first in list. Uh, this is false. Um, let's update this. 
Then I'm gonna serialize it. I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna uh, comment this for now. Public bool is first in list first list. So I made a setter for this, and what I'm gonna do is put a put this in an editor block. So I'm sure I'm gonna use it in. Oh no! Oh yeah. No. Only the set I want it I want to be in the in this block. So only from the editor I, I'm able to set this value, not from uh, not at runtime. Okay. So what this is gonna help me do is uh actually one other thing on yeah, on What the hell? On inspector in not this post in it, please. This should turn checked after the code is compiled. Yep, nice. Okay, so I'm actually going to use the value. So let's see where, where are we using this. Um, here. This is okay. Or is it? If it's less than zero and start right away or is first in the list. So I'm, I'm not going to put the value in this field. Um, I'm also going to check. So if it's the first in the list, I'm not going to use the value from here. I'm not trusting the value. Wait, does this work actually? Um, want this is going to be the first in the list, it's going to be others. So if it is the first, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, this one. Um, spawn or not spawn. So if it's the first, um, so, so, so the result in here is actually if I want to spawn right away. So if it's the first, um, I want to spawn right away. 
and I, I don't care about what value is here. If it's not a first one, um, I want to spawn if this is false, and I don't want to spawn. Okay. Okay, so if it's the first one, so, so this part covers this, covers those two, and this part covers this. So yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's fine here, I mean. Uh, now let's go, uh, let's go to the update and say, Uh, basically on the reverse of that so uh, if it's not the first one and this is checked and there are enemies left spawn then return if it's the first one i don't care if it's not checked, I don't care. And yeah, if uh, all enemies have been spawned, yeah, I can continue. Okay, yeah, that should do it. Let's test it again. Come on, compile. Okay, that started, and after a while, the other ones start as well. Cool. So this works. This is actually working, and we have action for not being able to click this if it's the first in the list. And now we can um, yeah, we're gonna hide it. I was wondering if I should just disable it. Uh, I, I have no no use for this uh, in the editor. We should just uh, get rid of it. Whoa! Let's try to uncheck this. Let's save and let's play. Um, hmm, interesting. So I don't know if they started after because of the delay. Let's put a, a bigger delay. So let's put a five second there. Those started. Then trial it takes a while for them to, or for the others to show up. Okay. Let's remove the delay. Let's put it at zero. Let's play it again. And this might be misleading, but I'm pretty sure that, uh, there are two enemies right here. Yep, there you go. They're in the same exact place because they spawned at this, uh, the same exact time. So they're at the same position. And those two are different because the, the spawn rate is different between the the two. Um, for the first one, they spawn two per second, and this one, it's one per second. And now, if we check this, let's play. So the two, and then the other two uh, start. Cool. Cool. So this works. Now the is done. 39 minutes. That's faster than I thought. Uh, I think I'm going to keep the second enemy. Let's do some uh, 
some review of what we've uh, actually made in here. So we change this select with the for loop because we need the we need the spawner. Okay. In the wave definition, we've added the two fields. Um, actually, those two fields, and then this one, is, uh, which tells us if it's the first uh, the first wave, um, or yeah, the first group from the from the wave that's gonna be spawned. Uh, and we've added this code that initializes that field. And this is the asset, and we don't care about it. Um, wait, there's something in the anime spawner. Have we seen this? No. So we're saving the enemy spawner, or the previous enemy spawner. We are saving the delay. Um, let's see, we get the previous enemy spawner here. We save it. And then we have this. We're saving, we're saving the delay. And then, if the delay is less or equal to zero, or this whole thing, we're gonna uh, do a spawn immediately. Um, okay, and in the update function, we are not updating the, the spawn timer um, every time, but uh, we are stopping in some situations. For example, if we have a delay timer and it's greater than zero, or we're stopping if we want to spawn uh, uh, the enemies in this spawner after the previous one. Yeah, so that should be fine. Now let me copy this again. Select everything. Picture. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, we're gonna do uh, one other thing, which is related to something that I've done since the stream. So um, if you've seen uh, previous streams, um, you might have noticed that now the game starts immediately whenever I, I play the game. So the, the spawning starts immediately. Previously, I had to go to the, to the level manager and uh, um, invoke the setup uh, manually. So drag the, the level in here and start the level. But since then, uh, I've made a change and um, uh, the, um, the game manager is taking care of that. But right now he's doing it in a in a hacky way. So um, let me show you. I don't want to move anything. Let's get to the game, not game settings, but in the managers. Yeah. So game managers. Where is it? Yeah, this one. So this line of code. After the game is initialized, and when I set it to play. Um, I'm uh, uh, doing the setup for the level manager, and this is not correct, obviously, because um, basically I'm going to the first level in the list, and or the first level list, and then uh, wait, this is not this is not even correct. I should have taken the select level list, not the first one. God damn it! Oh, the same pattern I have here. Nice. Yeah. So theoretically, it should have been like this. Get a selected level list. Get the first level from that, and um, do the set up the level manager with it. What I need here is an intermediary uh, manager which uh, deals not with uh, with the level itself but with uh, this uh, level list and basically the level list uh, what it is is just an uh, just an array of levels so we can actually see it if we go to 
your test levels. So it's basically a list of levels, and uh, this is what's gonna uh, this yeah this uh, this file is gonna define uh, what levels are gonna be played in the in the game, and we're gonna need the manager for this. So to so so the manager is gonna get a uh, this uh, a reference this file, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna play each level one by one. So gonna start a level, then wait for it to finish, then start another one, and so on and so forth. Um, do we still have music? Yes. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna work on right now. Um. Actually, um, we are gonna start working on this, but I don't think we're gonna complete it. Uh, um, I don't think we're gonna complete it today. I just thought about something, but uh, we'll see when we get there. So let me track the time for this. Okay, so. Now let's go to levels. Okay. I'm actually gonna do a lot of things that we've done for this, so it's gonna look similarly. Okay, so let's start with the entry point to the to the class, which is gonna be the um, setup method Okay, so we're gonna save this and then let's get this uh, in here so we have uh, we can compare them. Actually, I'm going to copy all of those. Um, level level is not going to be level manager, uh, not wave manager, but level manager. Okay.
we don't think we need this. Uh, we don't care when the when this when the level is finished or the level list is finished. But it's not right now. I think we're gonna uh, when we're gonna work on the um, end of the game. But that's uh, gonna be way there. Yeah, I think this is done. Um, let's add that button here. Just for testing purposes. And no, there's I want to change. So this, instead of having the level manager here, level list manager. I have a list manager. Like so. There we go. Uh, level manager. Um, don't care about the setup. Uh, I do care about this though. So let's duplicate this. Global level. And then in the game manager, I'm gonna link this. Okay, so now if you play, yeah, it started right away. So that's fine. It uh, works as expected. Nice. Cool. So yeah, I think we're done with this uh, with this task too. Um, actually, no, I want to check something first. There's an event, right? Does one use uh, uses this event? Uh, oh, interesting. I'm not. Wait, what? I should be able to see this. Oh, wait! Have I done this? Should have been. Be, I should have been able to. Oh no! Because I haven't implemented the 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 thing. Of course. Um. This fresh this game object. No, actually no, this is like like this. That is fine. Now let's see, it should collect data about the event and theoretically it should show us where it's used. Oh yeah, so it's linked to the the button. Yeah, so this is a yeah. So this is one thing that we have in the game or in the ES framework. Um, because we are we'll be using those. Uh, those events, which are skippable objects, I made some uh, some tools around them. So now, because I have this event once in here and uh, in used in this place as well. So wait, where is it? Yeah, here. So this is the same event on on level complete. Um, Collecting a lot of data about those, those elements and uh, what uh, events and uh, other things are used. And uh, I can draw stuff between them. For example, yeah, I know this button is connected to the level manager, for example. 
or if I'm at level manager, I can see that it's connected to the go to next level um, game object. I can look at everything that's used in the project, like the variables, the events, and whatnot. And yeah, just a, just a small tool for um, for seeing how things are linked in the game uh, using those uh, those events. And also, as you can see, I have uh, there are arrows on this, so I know. Um, who's listening and who's uh, actually triggering the event. So the level manager is triggering the event. So the, the arrow goes from the level manager to the bot. Because as you can see, so here's the event and I'm triggering it. And the button, I know I'm listening because yeah, I'm using an, I'm using this uh, event listener component, which specify that this is an event that's, that, uh, that we're listening to. So that's how, how I know to, to draw those, uh, those arrows and those lines between elements. Cool. Okay, now I'm... Can you not show this? Okay. Actually, I can be... I can just disable gizmos. Cool. So let's um, let's finish this task. And then uh, yeah, and uh, now we're gonna look into infinite levels. So feature. Yeah, so so we're gonna go out a bit of the project, so we're not gonna. So this um, is more of a research task than a than an actual task that I'm gonna work on today. Uh, I mean, do 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 coding for it, or maybe I'm gonna do some coding, but um, but for now it's uh, it's just a research task to see how it can be done. So now uh, first let's start with the with the. With, uh, with a problem and then uh, we're gonna try to find out how we can do this. So actually let's go to, to upgrade because it's simpler. Okay, so let's take this upgrade for example. This is an upgrade for tower health and um, you can specify the levels you can uh, buy in the game. So, so you can buy this upgrade multiple times and it's gonna become better and better. And uh, one thing that we want to do is have some upgrades that are um, that basically have infinite levels. So you you'll be able to specify a couple of levels, let's say four levels. And um, I don't know. Uh, let's uh, let's set this up so so it doesn't throw errors. Okay. So the first level is it has uh, so this is the tower health. So it multiplies the the tower health by so it's uh, it, it there's a 20% increase maybe the second one it's a 40% increase then the third one is 75% increase and this is 100% increase something like this and then uh, each time the the cost goes up by one now because i i have this uh, checkbox checked what i want to do is when the player has this level, so the last level, he should be able to upgrade further. So go to go to a next level. And uh, what I want is to uh, somehow deduce the multiplier from from the previous values and also the cost. And um, Yeah, now that I think about it, I think for infinite levels we should have a single currency, but I can do a validate for that, so that doesn't matter. Um, because it 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 won't work with uh, with, with multiple types of currencies. Okay, so 
yeah, this is what uh, what I want to do. Uh, somehow, um, um, yeah, um, find out what's the next number in this sequence. So I'm, I'm not sure how to do that. So that's what we're gonna uh, that's what we're gonna research. So let's uh, start the, the tracking for this task. Um, I think this is extrapolation. Linear polynomial, a uh, probable polynomial. But let's see. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know. And it's probably not going to be linear. Um, the data the data is not going to be um, linear. It's probably going to be exponential. Wait. Wait, 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 I, I'm not uh, sure I understand the... Um, no interpolation, I don't want interpolation. Oh, no, I don't. Um, I, don't know, I want a linear extrapolation. Wait, what, what is the extrapolation part? What, what am I not understanding? Yeah, so this is an extrapolated point. It's outside the, the range of those two points. Uh, the, here, it's a segment. It's basically given those two points, what's the next one? So how do I do that? I mean, Kind of understand how to do that. I need a slope. Hmm. I basically need the angle. Oh, and I can look at the values. Hmm.
Oh, I'm stupid. Of course, I know the X. It's like, it's, okay, I know the X because it's the distance between X1 and X2. Uh, the difference between X2 and X1. And uh, I add that to the X2. Yeah. So X minus X1. So it's the distance between those two times the slope. And plus Y1. So from here, what's the slope? So it's the slope through B and past B. Okay. 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 Yeah, so I know X. Yeah, I, I think I need to, to plot this somewhere. So let's do some... Let's see. Where can we write this? Um, let's do it in... You try code pen or... I mean, it could work. Yeah, let's do it in code pen. Why not? Um, if we can log in. Are you logged in on GitHub? Please tell me you're logged in. Yes. Let me move some things here and then we're gonna continue. Um, yeah. Oh, they've made some changes in here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's move this. Um, Um, okay. Uh, that's kind of weird. Yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, Okay, so let's create uh, let's create the data first. Let's say this is level. Um, I wish I don't even need the. So I know the x. I'm only gonna need the data. So let's say one. It's for zero. Level zero. It's one. Let, let's think of it as multipliers or something. One point two. Um, 1.4, So this is the data that we have. Uh, let's try to plot this. So um, let's see. Um, so let's see. Uh, quantity x is c dot uh, uh, to d.
Okay. Uh, actually, start from one. Um, yeah, sure, something like this. So I times this, theta of I times this. And it's actually I minus one. I minus one. Um, this work. What? Oh, now it wait that appear, but this doesn't appear. I don't get it. Oh, this is line two. Yay, we have the line. Well, now it's a straight line. So let's break this up. So let's put the five here. Let's put uh, an eight here. So it should Okay, fine, let's put the two in here. Okay. Uh let's just do something real quick. So trans transform uh, scale y. Minus one. Yep. Okay. So this is the data that we have. So so more like the the initial data. And what I want now is to draw or to get to the next point. Get the next point based on the on the data that that we have. Now, um, what I want to find out is, oh, I, I want to do something else also. I want to do some points. Um, let's do ctx begin path again, ctx that, um, shit, I don't know what's that called. Um, 
um, ellipses. That's the ellipse. Yeah, this is the one. Where the dimension, the rotation, and angle is in radians. So ellipse at this point, uh, at this point actually. Let's make a Uh, ten, ten, zero, zero, uh, mass pi times two. That's uh, kind of, let's make it a 3 pixel radius. Nice. Cool. What is what they what they said in the uh, this one? So we'll need the slope, and then we can calculate the new y. So basically, we need the last two points. So I'm gonna um, snag this. So this is the slope, and this would be something divided by something else and it's y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0 so that's the slope and here we're gonna return what's the new x so it's x1 um, const x2 equals to x1 plus x1 minus x0. Okay, const y2, let's put it as 0 for now. And this is what we're going to return, x2 and y2. And let's see what they say. So they want y0 plus the the slope multiplied by 
um, x is zero or no, uh, x two minus x zero. Zero one two zero one two so two and data of two three and data of three. Oh shit, um... Hey!
God damn it, this is starting to annoy me. Um, let's see TX. Okay, yeah, so let's make this more obvious. Let's put a 2.5 there. Yeah, so this is not why the thing that I want. So as you can see, so we have data. Um, Is quite. I mean, that's that's quite of a big jump. But uh, what I would like to see, so there is a curve here. Let Let's try to make it um, bigger. So uh, one one point. Let's say one point three, one point seven. So that's four. Uh, two point two. Oh, let's make it more extreme. So 1.3, let's add 6. And then let's add um, another 6 would make it linear. So we have to add twice that. So uh, 3.1, that would be 3.1. So as you can see, we have this um, this curve here, but um, the blue line is the extrapolated line. So the extra uh, are the extrapolated values. I don't think I want this to be linear, or at least not this. Uh, I think I maybe want to to look at the previous values and try to continue this curve. Um, so yeah, I don't think linear interpolation is what I want, or maybe it is. Uh, but um, I think I want to take more points into consideration. It is possible to include two, uh, uh, more than two points uh, and averaging the slope of the linear interval. Linear prediction. It looks like a lot of math that I don't really want to into um, Lagrange interpolation Newton's method of finite difference to create a series that fits the data. What the heck is the LJ? Oh, this is what the LJ is. Wait, where does K come from? Where does this K come from?
thing is um I think we want to do a, a complicated solution. There is not a generic one. Maybe we can limit. Um, maybe we can limit this because because how how our data is gonna is gonna look like. Or do we know? Um, I actually we don't really know how it's gonna look like. Never mind. Um, It's working now. It's probably similar for But I don't want two points, I want more more than two points. Yeah, I get slope and whatnot, I don't care about that. Uh, maybe maybe it does say. Oh, I have an idea. 
I do have an idea. Um, let's see how we can do this. Um, uh, let's change those. Uh, not this, but this. Yeah, let's keep the data here. And also the data here. And what I want to do is um, let's make a, a method that gives us the slope. Okay. And I go to data and I want to data slope of i minus one equals um Slope of i minus uh, minus one data of i minus one i and data of i
Ah, shit, I use exploration for um, shit. Yeah, now it's not correct. It's feeding back into itself when I extrapolate the. Okay, extrapolate. Um, here, we're going to fit that into slope like this. I'm going to do something similar here, except that I'm not going to fit in it into slope. In this function, we but I'm gonna go to the uh, slow uh, data slopes of i. Hey, now that's something I think I need to specify something like this, maybe. And I think I need the bigger graph, so let's make this bigger. Um, Let's double the height. And that's something. So basically what I'm doing right now is I am I'm extrapolating the slope and then I'm feeding it back into the Let's make this, because um, I can make this smaller, so let's make this like 10 for the Y. So, so I don't know why, it, why it's doing this in pairs. Uh, let's actually make it a bit bigger. Uh, let's add more of those. So let's see. Um, at this point and this point, and then when I, and you, you want to extrapolate. You want the slope. 
So this point is for this slope, so it's like this, like this, like this, like this. So it is actually the length. Could it be the length? Um, I mean, this doesn't look bad, to be honest. This kind of looks fine. Let's make those dots uh, smaller. Um, actually, no. Sure, a radius of one. I think it might be okay. I think this is actually what we want. I mean, it continues the curve. It looks like it's continuing the curve uh, nicely. So now let's try to... Let's make a linear. That looks linear. Uh, and then uh, let's make it a bit uh, more zoomed in on the Y. Yeah, that looks fine. That slope looks totally linear. It's, uh, it's totally flat, so yeah. And then let's try so we've incremented by one, let's try increment it by 0 0.5, so that would be to five there. Damn that way. Oh that is going down. Okay, that was not what I was expecting, because I don't want to, to go so what I wanted to see was this value would plateau, so it would go um, something like this, and then basically to a straight line. But what seems that it, uh, that it what it did like something like this, <laughs> just went, and then it fell. Um, Let's do something. Let's um do, 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 do. here. No, here. Ctx dot save. Ctx dot translate. Uh, let's translate by three. Uh, no, zero and three hundred. And then let's restore. Ctx dot restore.
So it goes, I was expecting it to plateau. But I guess the sloop is... Uh, is negative. Yeah, I can make, um, I can detect a slope in the editor and then, um, if you detect a slope, that's, uh, that is, uh, wait, but let's zoom in a bit, uh, a little bit more. Uh, so on X, let's make this, um, let's make this 20 and let's make this 20 as well. Let's zoom in a bit on this part. Yeah, so here, uh, let's do more. <laughs> so I'm curious about this uh, this magenta part. Yeah, so this is linear, and then the slope go uh, went down between those two points. So then it went downhill from there because this slope got. I wanna. Uh, I want to do a console log here. So console log. Um, I wanna look at the slopes. I wanna see what what the slope looks like. I don't really like it in here. Um, let me get the. Yeah, so it's 0 0.1 at first because so it's 0 0.1 from here to here, 0 0.1 from here to here, but then it went uh, half of it, then it went, I guess, near zero, and then it just go down by 0 0.5. Uh, point point zero point zero five not zero point five. Um, yeah. Wait, what? And now I'm confused. Yeah, indeed, the change go from this to the from between those two points. Point one, point one, zero, minus point one, minus point two, minus point down. Oh, cause, yeah, of course, because I'm getting slope for the slopes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If this is 0 0.3, then it's fine. It's going to be linear. And if this is 0 0.4, this is going to be exponential. Yeah. Not, not very, very exponential, but 
is going to be exponential. Yeah. Let's uh, remove this console lock because it's no longer needed. And actually, let's remove it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think we have it. This is what we have to do. Um, We are extrapolating, so we're getting the slopes. We're extrapolating the slopes, and then we use those extrapolated slopes to do to find out the, to extrapolate the, the data. I mean, actually, to be honest, I don't think because uh, the extrapolated uh, slopes that thing is going to be linear. So I might not have to extrapolate that data and just use the latest or the last value that I have. So if I go past the, uh, let's see. So in the extrapolate last here, I use the data slopes and then I have an I. I think, let's check. Uh, so math dot the minimum of I and Data slope at length minus one. I think I have to do this. And we're gonna have the same slope. We don't. We need at least one extrapolated value. Never mind. Wait, that actually changes. Okay, now I'm curious. So ma let's map this. Um, value index. Uh, well, next array, if index is zero, then zero, otherwise is value minus, oh, it is zero, no, it's not. So the slope does go up. Oh, but of course, yeah. It's not linear. It's not, no, no, yeah. I mean, it's linear. Yeah, it's linear. So it does go up. The slope does go up. But it doesn't. Yeah, 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 that, that makes sense. No, yeah, yeah, we have to, to extrapolate the, the slope. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we have to extrapolate the slope and then uh, feed it back to to the this other extrapolation. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So I guess we have our uh, our solution then. For generating uh, for generating new levels. Yeah. So yeah, I think we're gonna work on this um, next time, most probably. Because this is kind of the the next thing that 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 we have to do for having a uh, a more complete game, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is what we what we have to do. Because we kind of have everything in the game. I mean, no, actually, no, we don't. You can't. You can't actually buy upgrades. Uh, not from the. I mean, you don't have why for for getting the upgrades, but they but they do work. As in, you can theoretically buy them, and uh, uh, the um, the multiplayers are applied. Um, but we have to do the UI for that. So yeah, I guess. And actually, yeah, that's. UI is a big part. We should start working on the UI or start working more on the UI because right now they have those basic uh, those basic things on the screen. But um, yeah, kind of have stuff. You can create weapons. They actually work. So let's get easier. I can't wait the laser because I don't have 10 coins really. God damn it. But anyway, we have two types of weapons. We have uh, a laser and a uh, uh, projectile weapon. Um, we have enemies, we can create more enemies types. Um, we can, um, yeah, change how they, um, how tanky they are, how much health, what's word for killing them and whatnot. Um, we have this whole, um, we are generating the tower, which is um, generated the runtime. Nothing happens when you when you die actually. So that's, that's one thing that we have to work on. So uh, stopping the game when, we, when you reach uh, zero health. And you have, we have to do something with this button because right now it doesn't do anything. It, ju it just gets enabled when you when you finish the... Uh... Oh, this is not correct. This is reset to wave 1. Oh, I know why. Uh, I think I... I think I've just introduced this bug. Um... Because of this. I should have put that there, and this shouldn't be here. Yeah, that's a bug I've just introduced. Let's test that it's fixed. On compile. Thank you. down so this is wave two let's do it on fast speed let's keep yeah wave three something looks weird hey whoa 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 uh oh um yeah 
Um, yeah, so what would this be? Um, um, what have you worked uh, in the... The enemy spawner, I think. I don't have step of spawning here, so... Yeah, so we've just introduced a bug somehow. I'm not sure how, but we'll have to... I'll have to check this out. But we're probably gonna do that next time. Um, yeah, yeah, so I think we're gonna stop here for today. Um, next time, it's probably gonna be uh, next Saturday. Um, we're gonna start working on the probably we're gonna work on the UI and make this look uh, a little bit better and add some more options like uh, uh, buying upgrades and whatnot. And uh, we're gonna implement what we've uh, done research for. Actually, and now that I think, let me stop the, the tracking for the task. Yeah. So we're gonna work uh, to implement this um, this thing in the game for infinite levels for the upgrades and um, uh, for actually it's gonna be used in a lot of places in the game for. Uh, uh, multipliers for the enemies. Uh, we're gonna have um, uh, infinite waves in uh, in uh, in levels. We're also gonna have infinite levels, so we're gonna have like uh, a predefined number of levels that we're gonna build by hand. And after you finish the last one, you you will be able to continue playing the last uh, the last level. And uh, yeah, the the difficulty is just gonna increase, but uh, you're not gonna get new content basically. But you will be able to just continue indefinitely to play to play the game. So um, yeah, this system is gonna be is gonna be used in a lot of places in the game. So um, yeah, we'll have to see how we implement it so we can use it in a generic way in the in the game. Okay, and um, yeah, I think those are the main things that we're gonna work on uh, next time. Probably UI and uh, infinite levels. So yeah, uh, thanks for being here, and um, yeah, uh, see you next time. Bye bye.